Welcome to the SCPI Week 3 Football Playoff Podcast. Alongside Keith the Mulder, I am Connor Morissette. We'll get you some updates as to what happened last week in the city section playoffs from the eight-man all the way to the open division. Keith, I know you were checking out the eight-man championship. I was at an open division game. I'll give out some game balls and we'll make some picks. Keith, what another exciting week in uh, city section football now. The semifinals begin for every division besides eight-man. It's an exciting time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, obviously eight-man just ended. Uh, fantastic game from that one. We'll get to that in a bit. But some upsets to talk about, which always makes things exciting. Yeah, Division two and Division three upsets, uh, they happened pretty frequently. So we'll get to that in a little bit. But let's start, Keith, with your eight-man football update. Uh, you were at Anemo, or you were at Fairfax High School for Anemo Robinson's game. Um, and uh, they come out and win the eight man over Sherman Oak CES, I believe. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a slugfest throughout. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Sherman Oak CES actually came out to a uh, 14 nothing lead over Anemo Robinson, but then Anemo Robinson came back with a vengeance, scored 28 unanswered. Uh, fantastic game from them. They had a lot of emotion, uh, a lot of great fan support, especially. Um, you know, eight-man football, it's a little bit of a different game. It's only 80 yards in terms of from end zone to end zone, uh, but still a fantastic game. And Nemo Robinson, their defense was good, uh, but their offense was even better. I was at Fairfax for their open division game um, against Birmingham, who they hosted. That was the 4-5 matchup, so a game you'd expect to be close. And out of all the Division One and open division playoff games last Friday, that was the only game that was close, so I was happy with the decision I made. And uh, Fairfax, they won that one 40 to 35. It was back and forth football. I don't know if people saw this on Twitter, but I, I said it was one of the best games in the city section I'd been to all year. High scoring, not a lot of penalties, and it moved quickly. You know, sometimes there may be an injury here or there, or just a lot of turnovers, a lot of flags, and the slow the games down. It, that was for, for a neutral, for someone covering the game, that was a just really great one to see. And then Fairfax comes out on top. Uh, Scott Harris, the quarterback for Fairfax, played very well. Daryl Carrington on defense, the linebacker, looked great. Kevon Johnwell had a touchdown. He was healthy and, and back for Fairfax. And then on the Birmingham side, Jason Artiga, the quarterback, he fought so hard and almost got uh, Birmingham to victory in the end, but uh, their last drive fell a little bit short. And there was a uh, return for a touchdown on a kickoff from Birmingham as well. That was a really nice play. But that was a great game, and uh, I was happy I went to it. How close was the Anemo Robinson Sherman Oaks CES game? Was it a couple scores? Couple of, you know, a couple of scores, but clearly uh, Anemo Robinson okay. was going to win that one outright. Uh, obviously, you know, talking about that Birmingham game, could have gone, you know, could have gone either way. I was surprised that it was actually that close and that high scoring, considering that both defenses are pretty good. But when you have two offenses like they do, I mean, it's bound to be high scoring. So those are the updates from where we were uh, over the weekend. Now let's kind of get into what happened uh, just in general. So looking at open and in Division One, Narbonne in the open, Fairfax, Carson, Crenshaw, they all win. So those are the seeds one through four. No real surprises there. In uh, Division One, San Fernando wins, Garfield wins, Dorsey wins at Palisades, and which was an upset on paper. Dorsey was the six, Palisades was the three, but you know Dorsey has four real Division One players on that team and. You expected them to win. I expected them to win. That was a very tough game for Palisades, so almost not really an upset there. And then Southgate uh, also wins, so really not too many surprises in the Open in Division One. And I think uh, this week we, we might see a couple upsets. Yeah, I, it's really tough, especially uh, especially with the Open Division, because you know you have these top seeds in Crenshaw and in Narbonne that you know week in and week out we're saying they're the best teams in the section by far but this is high school football after all anything can happen uh, especially in division one where we see some teams that we thought were going to go far that ended up getting upset so uh, injuries playing a huge factor there too division two eagle rock the one seed they win cleveland the four seed win so they'll play each other hunting the park the two seed beat roosevelt who had beaten them earlier in the year so that's a good win for hp the one upset in division two number six granada hills upsets Reseda. And uh, Reseda's quarterback, Mike Martin, I believe, went down in that game. You right, mentioned yep. Keith. So that was the reason for Reseda only putting up 13 points. And, and they fall at home 16-13. That's a low output for them. They're usually really rolling on offense with Jelani Ellison, right. Mike Martin. But a uh, tough break for them. So now Granada Hills moves on. And uh, they're into the next round. Yeah, fantastic to see them. Uh, Max Perez, we'll, we'll give him a shout-out a little bit later. He had a fantastic game for Granada Hills. Uh, and that's what high school football is all about, is these underdog teams that go up against these powerhouses like Reseda and are able to beat them. We'll see how far they go in this round. 
And Granada Hills now they'll play Huntington Park, so we'll pick that one in a little bit. In Division Three, so on one half of the bracket it's normal. You have three Locke playing two Marshall, but then on the other side it's Pandemonium <laughs> with number nine Monroe who upset Santee, the one seed, in overtime at Santee in an incredible game. Uh, so they're one seed. And then Verdugo Hills who upset Torres, the four seed. Verdugo Hills is the five seed, so you have the 2-3 matchup on one end, and then on the other end it's a 5-9 matchup. Uh, that's kind of the craziest bracket that we've seen this year. And shout out to Mon Monroe beating uh, Santi, a team who we thought was going to roll to the championship. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that you went into Santi and beat Santi, uh, albeit by one point, fantastic, especially in overtime. It's so hard in those overtime games uh, to get anything on the board. Uh, so got to give a credit out to Monroe. And Santi was coming in the number one seed. We thought they were the best team. Uh, I think that lock maybe a better defense, but... Fantastic to see, and Verdugo Hills, you talk about them, they're a high-scoring offense, so it'll probably be another high-scoring matchup, but who comes out on top? I don't know, it's, it's, it's a real toss-up. Yeah, and shout-out to Verdugo Hills. They crushed Torres 43-13, a game I thought was, that was going to be a little bit closer, but it wasn't. To do that on the road, uh, that's very impressive. So there's kind of the update there on, on what's happened. Division one and open, no real surprises. I think that's going to change, and, and we'll get to some picks in a little bit. And then division two and three, a couple upsets here and there. But so far, it's been a very entertaining playoffs, and uh, I've been really happy with the product, especially at that Fairfax Birmingham game. That was great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all, you know, there's some games that were blowouts. Obviously, with the number one seed, you know, San Fernando is just clearly showing who's boss uh, over in their division. But there's a lot of really tight matchups, a lot of tight games, and that's what you like to see. No, no, it's not all the top seeds going on to. Play play the top seeds other than open uh, the open division but you know having a lot of these underdogs come in it's very exciting let's move on to our game ball segment now I have two players who I want to recognize for their performances this past Friday Keith I know you've got a player as well so uh, as is the uh, tradition on the podcast I'll let you go first all right so my first of two actually game oh, balls. you got two okay uh, yeah Max Perez give him a shout out uh, from Granada Hills he had a fantastic game uh, is one of the main reasons why they even won that game uh, just looking at some of his stats, he went for 100, excuse me, 210 yards rushing the football, two touchdowns. So you get a game ball from me, Max Perez. He was a key factor in that win. Another guy we've talked about a lot, uh, Scott Harris. He, week in and week out, one of the most polished passers, uh, as I've said, you know, in the section. Just looking at his overall game, you know, 13 completions, 22 attempts, uh, 215 yards, and then also two touchdowns. But what I'm most impressed with is his ability to use his legs to extend plays. He had a great game on the ground uh, in that win over Birmingham. Not easy to do against Birmingham. Birmingham, a great de uh, team defensively. But Harris, he actually led Fairfax 91 yards rushing and also two touchdowns. So responsible for four touchdowns. This team, they can't go anywhere unless Scott Harris you know, has a great game. So... He's really the entirety of this team, and it's it's a credit to how well they're doing right now. Yeah, he looked great. Uh, I think defensively, the linebacking core is good, and then keep on John Will helps with with right. them a lot, the running back. But uh, Harris was awesome. The option was really working against Birmingham, and I was up uh, in the press box with some of the Birmingham defensive coordinators, and they were getting very frustrated that the option uh, with Scott Harris was working. He'd do a really good fake to John Will, and then he'd take the ball, and he had a couple of big runs of over 40 yards. So uh, those are Keith's two game balls there. I, I, I co-sign two great performances. <laughs> Uh, so mine, I have Ernie Arcia, Southgate quarterback. Uh, they beat Westchester 45-21, and look at this stat line. He was 21 of 30 for 333 yards, four touchdowns. He ran the ball for 108 yards and had a running touchdown as well. That's one of the all-time quarterback performances that we've seen this year. Uh, Ernie Arcia is a terrific player. For me, he's probably the third best quarterback uh, in the section. I think Harris might be a, a bit in front of him and then Jalen Chapman as well, but he's a, a top tier LA City section quarterback and looked uh, fantastic against Westchester. And now they'll play Dorsey. I, oh. We'll get to the picks in a little bit, but that's going to be a tough one to pick. And then uh, for Narbonne, Darian Butler, the linebacker for them, had a fantastic game. Uh, that was a win for Narbonne, 48-14 to over San Pedro. Butler had 12 tackles, and six of those tackles were for loss. So talk about just being an absolute beast in the, the opposition's backfield. So shout-out to Ernie Arcia and Darian Butler. Those are the two game balls from me. Keep up the great work. All right, let's make some picks. It's the semifinals for every division besides the eight-man D3, D2, D1, and the Open. Let's start in Division Three. So, Keith, the first game, that crazy one that we talked about earlier, it's number nine Monroe against number five Verdugo Hills. 
Uh, I'll let you go first, and we can kind of bounce back and forth a little right. bit. Well, what, who do, what do you see in this game? Who do you like? Uh, very tough, very tough. It, it, this Monroe team, we didn't really know that much about them no. uh, coming into this playoffs. You know, they were kind of a middle-of-the-road type of squad, and Verduco Hills, obviously one of the better uh, better offenses in that division. And so it's really tough to pick against Verdugo Hills with their high-powered offense. Uh, but you have, you know, that momentum of Monroe. I don't know. It's very tough. You know, I'm going to go with offense. It seems to be a theme in these playoffs. So I'm going to go with uh, Verdugo Hills over Monroe in that game. In the words of Lee Corso, good pick. Good pick. Uh, <laughs> that's what I have too. Monroe, they're 1-4 and four at home, 4-3 four and three away from home. And this game is at Verdugo Hills. So if you're a Monroe fan, you, you like that stat. But these two teams already played this season, and it was at Verdugo Hills, and Verdugo Hills won 40-15. to 15. So I, I can't pick against them after what I saw earlier this year. So I'm uh, going to take Verdugo Hills. And then in the uh, classic game, the three against two, the one uh, that people expected, it's three lock at two Marshall. Uh, why don't I get this one started? I'm okay. taking uh, Marshall with the quarterback, Daniel Soto, who had a fantastic game uh, against Kennedy last week. He was on my uh, list of uh, guys I tweeted about this past week who had great performances. I, I think he wills them to a win. He is probably the best quarterback left in Division Three. So right. uh, Daniel Soto, I think he uh, gets it done, and Marshall beats Locke and advances to the championship. Yeah, and it's so tough to root against them. Uh, and, and, you know, Locke. They have a great defense. Yeah, you've That's been on the lock bandwagon. I have been. I have been. It's very tough. Uh, looking at Marshall as well, they have a very balanced uh, rushing attack. Uh, Got to give a shout out, of course, to uh, to Jose Hernandez as well, the senior, 60 yards and two touchdowns in his last game. But overall, you know what? I'm gonna have to stick with my gut. I'm gonna have to go with Lock in this All right. one. I said that their defense. Uh, I think that it shuts down Marshall and Marshall, the Barristers. We saw them against Eagle Rock. They, they weren't really even in it. Uh, you know hardly in the game they had a big play uh, but that was basically about it they weren't able to sustain any drives and I think that lock given the fact that their defense has been so good I think that they come out with the W in division two number four Cleveland at number one Eagle Rock again the bracket there uh, if you just pick with the seeds you would have been correct so both teams can score Cleveland's put up points against Reseda this year they they put up points uh, last week in their playoff victory but you can't pick against Eagle Rock right now. They are by far the best team not in the Open or in Division One. I. I think uh, they're going to go all the way on to uh, States after they win the D2 championship. So, Cleveland, I, I, I love you, but i got to take Eagle Rock. I just think they're in a league of their own. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt about it. Uh, Eagle Rock, Stone Cold State, you know, Stone Cold Davy Stone, so good, so good, uh, that whole offense, but also their defense is, is one of the more underrated parts of that whole team. Their secondary, especially, their ability to knock down passes against, you know, that Marshall team that we spoke about earlier. Uh, Marshall was really unable to get th anything going through the air, so I think that uh, Cleveland they are going to try the ground and pounds, and that'll be kind of where they get some of their points on the board, uh, but I think overall, I think Davy Stone leads this Eagle Rock team to a win. Number six, Granada Hills at number two, Huntington Park. How do you see that one playing? See, this one is tough. This one's very tough because you got to think, you know, that Reseda team, they lost because they, you know, they lost their quarterback. And, you know, Granada Hills, they come in. Max Perez had a fantastic game. We got him a shout out. Uh, but I don't know. I think that, I don't think Granada Hills has enough. I think it goes the other way for them. I agree. I'm taking Huntington Park. Too much offense. Granada Hills only putting up 16 points against Reseda. It's just not going to do it against Huntington Park, uh, an offense that's really, really talented, a team that put up 34 against Palisades, right. a Division One foe on the road. I think we're looking at a one against two in the D2 championship, Eagle Rock the one, Huntington Park the two. All right, Division One, Keith, so the first game on the slate, it's number four, Garfield, at number one, San Fernando. And if you look at the calpreps.com algorithm, hmm. they picked that game San Fernando squeaking out 28-27. I see it a little bit differently. San Fernando's won its first two games uh, in the playoffs by a combined score of 100 to nothing. Wow. They're clearly just <laughs> in a league of their own, almost like Eagle Rock is a little bit. But I, I, I don't want to – let me retract that because I, I think there are other really good teams in Division One. Right. whereas with Eagle Rock it's a little bit of a different uh, situation. I don't think Garfield's defense is good enough to stop San Fernando. I think it's a two-score game in favor of San Fernando, but – Garfield's offense is pretty good, and San Fernando will, will be tested defensively. I'm looking at like kind of a like a 34-21 kind of thing, yeah. uh, and I have San Fernando. 
Yeah, absolutely. You can't go against this rushing attack for San Fernando. So, so good. Look at these stats from the last game. They threw it only five times. So it just goes to show you they get all of their yards on the ground. 420 yards, seven touchdowns. And look at this yards per carry average, 14. So every single carry, they got a first down and more. They're just unreal. Their offensive line is, is a testament to how good their coaching is, uh, but more so how talented these athletes are. So you're right. I'm going to have to go with San Fernando. They seem like the favorite to win it all, really. Yeah, even though we're both picking San Fernando, the Garfield offense is good, too. Adam right. Polanco, Jalen Lawrence, uh, Moses Gonzalez, those are guys who can make plays. So I expect this one to be close, but I look for uh, San Fernando to pull away uh, towards the end of that one. In the other game, the sixth seed, the Dorsey Dons, traveled to play Southgate, who's the two seed. This is the toughest game in Division One to pick, I think, Keith. Yeah. So uh, I'll let you uh, get started with that. Okay. All right. Well, pff, tough, tough, tough to to pick. You know, against Dorsey right now, the momentum clearly on their side. That whole team, they were angry, not getting in the open division. Uh, clearly, was something to prove and everything to you know, you know, nothing to lose really. Uh, everything to prove and the fact that they've come out, they beat a very good Palisades team. The way that they beat them was fantastic. Obviously, their defense, you know, allowing quite a bit of rushing yards on the ground, but overall, their offense has been humming, getting their quarterback, as we mentioned back, has been huge for them. Uh, but ultimately, Ernie Arcia, he's he's the man of the year, really, in Division One, and I think I see Southgate pulling out the W. I think it's going to be a high-scoring contest, no doubt. Uh, we saw that, you know, in weeks prior with Southgate, uh, but Ernie Arcia, he's the man, and I think he pulls out the W. He is a fantastic quarterback, uh, but not so fast. Oh. I'm taking uh, Dorsey. They're clicking, hmm. and they should be in the open division. They just played such a hard non-league schedule, and they just weren't ready from the get-go, and they lost a lot of games, and they didn't look great. But out of all the teams in Division One, no one even comes or who are left, no one even comes close to the, the four Division One prospects who, who are on Dorsey. They just have really good players, and... Isaiah Smalls, Charles Mincy Jr., Jawan Collins, Timothy Mosley. These guys are all going to play Division I college football. Southgate, I don't think they have anyone who's going to play uh, <laughs> Division I college football. So I have to go with Dorsey. It's been kind of a, a weird year with them just getting off to that awful start. Now they're clicking. I think they've won six games straight. I'm taking the Dorsey Dons. High-scoring game, but again, I think they outlast Southgate like they outlasted Palisades. Kind of close at the beginning, but then, then they pull away. They're on a mission they're not going to make states because uh, the D1 winner won't go to states, but they're on a mission to win the, the Division One tournament and, and still get some silverware this season after getting off to such a bad start. Right, and, and it, it's really more of a pride thing at this point. They, they don't care about you know state playoffs or anything like that. It's just about showing L.A. that they can indeed win, that indeed these are the Dorsey Dons. Uh, guys that are continually in the Open Division Championship uh, playing with you know those other guys, Narbonne. Uh, but yeah, I think they have a lot to prove. I'm not sure. It's gonna be. It's it's so tough to pick against them. You're right. They have a lot of talent, uh, but you gotta wonder. I mean, whose chemistry is better right now? And especially at home for Southgate, that'll be huge too. Yeah, and Dorsey. This is the first year of the Open, but usually they are right up there with the D1 teams, who in the past would be the Open Division team. So it's all kind of confusing. But I, I understand what you mean. They're they're usually the cream of the crop, and this year they fell a little bit, but they do have something to prove. All right, Keith, on to the open division, number four, Fairfax, at number one, Narbonne. I was at Fairfax's game, as I've been talking about uh, the whole show. They beat Birmingham. They looked good in that game, but it was tightly contested. Uh, that said, I have Narbonne by three scores. I just think they're too much. Yeah, absolutely. Narbonne all the way. We've talked about it, you know, day in and day out, just how good this team is. D1 prospects. Jalen Chapman, you know, albeit a little bit, uh, you, know, you know, he can hit. He can also miss uh, a couple of picks in that San Pedro game. I just think that this, you know, every single rusher on this Narbonne team has the potential to go for 60. You know, we saw it against Carson. You know, first play of the game, it almost it seemed after a turnover, was a 60-yard touchdown by Jamar Jefferson. I mean, the, this this whole offense, just the way they like to spread it out in terms of their formation. You know, defenses just can't compete with that. They're, they can't compete with the speed of this Narbonne offense. And then defensively as well, Logan Taylor, you know, all those secondary guys for Narbonne, so, so talented. And Scott Harris, he's a leader on that team for Fairfax. But my, 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 my motto for them, one year away. Next year, I think that they could really be the number one team in the city section, given all of the pieces that they have around them. But... I don't know. I don't see that defense being able to hold that offensive Narbonne. Yeah, and I talked about the D1 prospects on Dorsey. Just look at the defense for, for Narbonne that Scott Harris is going to be going up against. Ray Scott going oh. to USC. Julian Lewis has Division One talent. Darian Butler, Division One talent. Logan Taylor, Division One talent. DeMonte Peoples, 
Division One talent as well at cornerback. It's just an absolutely loaded defense that Fairfax really hasn't seen the likes of so far this year. Yeah, they played a couple Southern Section teams, uh, so, so maybe they, they've seen something close to that, but it's different in the playoffs. Uh, just Narbonne's too talented. I'm taking uh, the Gauchos, and then you know I went on about their offense or their defense. On offense, they have some <laughs> great D1 players as well. They're just a complete team. Yeah. Number three, Carson at number two, Crenshaw. Keith, I think I know who you like here. Uh, let's hear it. All right. Well, I'm going to go with Crenshaw over Carson, and I think that I think I don't think it's going to be close. I don't think that it'll be close, and here's why. Looking at Carson. The team, very one-dimensional. They can only run the football, just kind of like San Fernando. But I think that San Fernando, given against their talent that they face, just obliterates opponents with their offensive line. But looking at Carson, I don't think that they can compete really with the Crenshaw defense. The Crenshaw defense, very underrated. Uh, we saw against Dorsey, they were able to shut him out uh, despite all of the pieces that Dorsey has. So I think that Crenshaw, they come out, they surprise some people with a big win over Carson. And looking at this offense for Crenshaw, you know, Solomon Hashen, you know, all those guys that came over from L.A. high and now lead this team. Earlier in the year, they played really tough competition and weren't as good because of the transfers. But now they have a solid offense in place. I think it's Crenshaw. Not so fast, Keith. Oh. I am taking Carson. That is my pick this wow. week. All season long, uh, Coach Arnold Ale in his first year, the, the motto has been make Carson great again. And th <laughs> they had a chance against Narbonne to really get that season-defining win, and they weren't able to do it. Now they play at Crenshaw in the Open Division playoffs to get a season-defining win, and I think they're able to do it. So here, here's my rationale. Um, I just don't think Crenshaw has seen a really loaded defense in a couple months. Dorsey's defense is good, right. but it's nothing like uh, this Carson defense. I think the Carson defense is a step above uh, um, Dorsey's defense. Crenshaw, they played a couple of tough southern section schools earlier in the year, Vista Marietta, uh, South Hills, and they lost both of those games. But since then, it's been a smooth sail for them. Right. LA High, Hawkins. View Park. Uh, they played Banning last week. It was better than those teams, but that's an easy game for them. Right. And they, they won uh, really, really easily. So I'm taking Carson, I think, because the Marine League schedule for them has been a, a battle. Crenshaw hasn't been as tested lately, and I think Carson's going to surprise some people. Led by Danilin Fuimano, the safety and running back. Give me the Colts. Wow. A great pick, I will say. It's probably one of the hardest picks in this whole bracket other than, you know, other than the championship hey, game. But you like will... Crenshaw in the blowout, so Here, here's the thing. What are you here's saying the thing here, though. Keith? I'm saying it's tough but basically because of the, the emotional side of this whole bracket and the fact that uh, Carson has a huge rivalry with Narbonne, the game that happened earlier this year. Yeah, it was ugly. You were there. Yeah, it was it was ugly, you know, big hits, onside kicks, no handshake after the game. So Carson, you know, they, they have a reason to win this game because they're gonna they want that rematch with Narbonne so, so badly. Uh, but I think that I think that Crenshaw ultimately is more talented better coach better scheme uh, and, and I think that Crenshaw does win but how awesome would it be to see Narbon and Carson a rematch in the open final I don't know it'd be awesome to see but I don't think it happens you might be selling coach Ali a little short I think he's a pretty solid coach as well um, but hey you know you have your opinions I have mine I'm taking Carson you're taking Crenshaw and uh, I guess that's a good spot to end. Uh, we'll, we'll end on a disagreement. This has been the Week 3 SCPI Football Playoff Podcast for Keith DeMolder. I am Connor Morissette. Keith will be at Narbonne. I will be at the Crenshaw game. And we'll all be at the championship. So if you see us, come over, say hello. We'd love to talk with you. Uh, but we'll see you next time. And really, City Section football fans, enjoy these playoffs. The semifinals are going to be awesome. Uh, good luck uh, to all the teams.